Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy on tonight. Amen. We welcome you again to the Bible study. Amen. Sincere Milk of the Word Bible Study. God bless you, Mother Wilson. Amen. As Peter said in Second Peter, First Peter, second chapter, wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Amen. And we thank God for his word on tonight. Amen. And that's what we are here to do by the grace of God is teach you the sincere milk of the word, unadulterated, nothing added, nothing taken away. God bless you, um, Yolanda. Amen. God bless you, Evangelist Turner. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for his word, for by we are warned and in keeping of it, there is a great reward. Amen. Who can understand his errors? But the Bible says, cleanse thou me from secret sin, secret faults. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lashonda. We're going to wait just a little longer. Then we're going to get into the word on tonight. Thank God for everyone joining tonight. Amen. And as we always say, we thank God above all things for his word. Amen. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were created by him, by the word of God. And nothing that was made was made without him. Amen. And we thank God for redemption through Jesus Christ, through the word of God. Hallelujah. We praise God for his goodness. Our opening scripture on tonight is going to be coming from Psalms 91. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. We're going to open with a word of prayer. And again, we say welcome to the sincere milk of the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your goodness and mercy, for your love and kindness, for your grace and your truth. We thank you above all things for your word that you've given unto us to lead us back to you, to cleanse our hearts, to cleanse our minds. Amen. To heal our bodies, we thank you for it on tonight. And Lord, we pray that as we open your word, you would open our hearts, that you would cause us to hear what your spirit will say to us this night. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you, Lord God, would fill us with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that we might walk worthy of you unto all pleasing and that we might be fruitful in every good word and every good work, and increase in your knowledge, we pray, according to your word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God for his goodness. Amen. We're going to open our Bibles to uh, Psalms 91. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lawana. God bless you, Deacon Rashad. God bless you, Pastor Trotter. Amen. Look at um, Psalms 91. Amen. Very powerful and important scripture, especially in the times that we are living in. So we pray that you would hear what the Spirit will say to the church on tonight. He that dwelleth in the secret place, and that secret place is Christ Jesus, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in, in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I'm going to add this, nor for the coronavirus. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. We thank God for his word on tonight. That's an awesome promise. Amen. And I want to say something because <clears throat> we know... And we've heard that there are some saints have um, died from the coronavirus, but they didn't have to be afraid of it because to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. Amen. We don't know what might take us physically out, but when our focus is right, that is not our real concern. Our concern is that our souls are hid in that secret place. Amen. Jesus told his disciples, he told them, he said, in me, you're going to have peace. But in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So in the flesh, you're going to have trouble. Amen. You might get sick. You remember Paul had a, Ill, had a, a situation with his eyes. He called a thorn in the flesh. We believe it was with his eyes. God bless you. Um, um, Beverly, Sister Beverly, good to see you. Um, we believe it was with his eyes, but he prayed three times that God would take it away. But what did God tell him? He said, my grace is sufficient. Why? Because my power is made perfect in your weakness. Amen. And so we just thank God for his power, the power that works in us by Christ Jesus. Amen. And so... We thank God for his word on tonight. We're going to get right to the word. Amen. Because God has some things that he wants to show us. Amen. And we are still dealing from the subject or the um, doctrine of what we are saying, the doctrine of perfection. We're talking about perfecting holiness. Amen. Because that's something that we don't deal with much and... Um, the Lord has just been revealing to me. The more I get in the word and read the word, I was just reading in, and I believe if we have time, we're going to look at it tonight in Colossians, the first chapter um, this morning in my time with the Lord. Amen. How it deals with perfecting and perfection because that's what God is in the process of doing for the church is perfecting us to get us ready for his coming. Amen. And so he says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, not some. Amen. Because we have a bad habit as the people of God of picking and choosing what we want to give up and what we want to hold on to. Amen. But you have to be willing to give up everything that God um, calls you to give up. Amen. And, and he don't have to speak anything to you audibly. You have 66 books, and that's the Word of God being spoken to us. Amen. And we need to get in the Word, see what is the mind of God. You want to know the mind of God? It's in those 66 books. Amen. And he, His mind is revealed to us through Jesus Christ. And so we want to make sure that we are um, walking 
in the light as he is in the light. Amen. And he's in the light, the Bible says, in the perfect way. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And so what we are seeking to do, I know what I'm seeking to do and what I'm teaching you as your pastor is to, to seek perfection. Amen. Don't stop short of perfection. Let me read this 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 um, passage to you. I put it in one of my stories. I didn't really do any commentary on it. Turn right quick. We're going we're gonna to be in back in James, the third chapter, but this just came to me, and I wanted to just drop this on you. Psalms 18. I want you to look at that for a minute because there's something very powerful there that we need to consider. Look at, um, well, let's just look at verse 30 first. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. Psalms 18 and 30. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a, a buckler to all those that trust in him, a shield to all those that trust in him. He shields us from the fiery darts of the wicked. But as for God, his way is perfect. I want you to um, hear that. And Jesus is that way. He is the way of the Father. He, is here. he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But watch this, because I want us to get this. Third, verse 32, it is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Okay? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my... It says his way is perfect, but then it said he girds me with strength, with his strength, and makes my way perfect. Okay? Now... Skip over to uh, <clears throat> verse, skip down to verse, um, well, let's just, let's read down there. Let, look at verse 33. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teaches my hands to war. So that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand, which is the word of God. And thy right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. And we, and we also put in our story that scripture in, in um, um, where is that? Zechariah, I forget the exact scripture, but it talked about in that day, the um, the feeble ones are going to be like David. Amen. And David was a mighty warrior. This is that day through the power of the Holy Ghost because what made David the great warrior that he was was the anointing of God upon his life. Saul initially had the anointing of a king. He had the anointing to do battle. And when he had that anointing, when Saul went out, he was able to conquer his enemies. But when he disobeyed God and God withdrew himself and he no longer had that anointing, God put it on David. All of a sudden, David was the mighty warrior. And so you have to understand that same anointing that was on David that made him great. Amen. That made him a powerful man of God. That same anointing, if you have been filled with the spirit of God, is on you. But you're going to have to, like David, Learn how to love God's word because the reason why he was a man after God's own heart is because his heart was full of the word of God. We're going to see that on tonight. Okay, but remember that his way is perfect. God's way is perfect. And he makes my way perfect through his spirit and by his word. Now watch this. He says in verse 35, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, thy right hand, have holded me up, and thy gentleness have made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. In other words, I didn't hit them one time and then just let them go. You know, I saw an animal fight once. It was a... a a tarantula against a wasp. Now, the tarantula is many times larger than the wasp. 
But this wasp was courageous. They hunted tarantulas because God had put something in them that didn't let them fear tarantulas, but they would actually go looking for them. Amen. And so he found the tarantula and the fight ensued. And so both of them have um, powerful venom. And so as they were fighting, the tarantula got the initial um, strike and it stunned the wasp. But instead of the tarantula going in for the kill, he laid back and let the wasp regain himself. And then the wasp went right back to work and ultimately killed the tarantula. What are you saying? See, when God begins to give you victory over the sin in your life, you can't become lax. You have to fight until you have it totally under control. And this is what he's saying. I pursued my enemies. And we always talk about who is our greatest enemy? Us. Amen. The lust in our flesh. If you can control, we're going to see it tonight. If you can control the lust in your own flesh, can't nobody destroy you from without. The devil can only destroy you from within. And so you can't, um, just because you get a victory today, say, oh, and just relax. No, you got to prepare for the, the next fight. And you got to go in there and, and, and beat that flesh down until it cannot recover. Look at verse 37 again. I have pursued mine enemies I, and overtaken them. Neither turned I again until they were consumed. Look at verse 38. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. For thou have girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou have subdued unto me those that rose up against me. Get the revelation. Amen. You, we, can't, we can't relax. We have to understand that this, this battle that we're fighting, the devil, just like he did Jesus, he left him for a season, but he, was, he came back. Amen. And he's relentless. Amen. My father used to always tell us, <clears throat> he said, the devil... It's never a time where the devil um, says, well, uh, you live for me long enough. I'm just going to uh, leave you alone. No, he's going to dog you till death. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so we have to have that mentality, that killer instinct in the spirit against sin. Sin, first of all, in your own flesh. Amen. And then you have to help others get free. Amen. But you can't turn back. So I, I just wanted to drop that in there while God was putting it on my spirit. Amen. So um, what we want to do is several things I want to look at. I don't know how much we're going to get to look at tonight. But let's go back to let's go back to James 1. I mean, James chapter 3. James chapter 3. We're going to begin reading at the first verse. However, we're not going to commentate on everything because we actually uh, commentated on most of it pretty thoroughly last week. So you can go back on, on our um, channel and look at that message. Amen. And we're talking, we've, we, we've talked about the three stages of perfection. There is completeness. That's when you get saved. The Bible said we are complete in him who is made the head of all principality and power. That means everything you need is in Christ Jesus. You don't have to go outside of him for anything. Amen. All the wisdom and knowledge of God is hid where? In Christ. So that's completeness. You have everything you need, just like when a baby is born, have all their little fingers and toes and all their little body parts. The only thing they have to do is the next stage of perfection is what? Mature. And that's the stage that we're in right now. We're in a stage of maturity. And we talked about the, the fact in, in, in um, Ephesians chapter 4, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to bring the church to a place of perfection. Amen. Through, through the teaching of the word, the preaching of the word, um, through the um, gifts of the spirit. Amen. It's to bring the church to a place of perfection. Not so that you can be some great wonder, 
but it's so that you can use your gift, whatever that gift is. Amen. Do your part in um, helping the church come to a place of maturity. Amen. Because we said two stages of perfection we can attain in this life. The last stage, which is consummate perfection, which we'll probably deal with Friday night as the end of this particular series, is the stage that you can only attain in the life to come. But we have to be aware and understand. We got to stop this saying nobody's perfect because as long as we have that mentality, you won't even try, you won't even strive for perfection. But the Bible, and I made it clear, you can go back, this is the sixth part. Go back to parts one through five. You're going to see in there, we dealt with the scriptures. God said, be per Jesus said, be perfect even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So he becomes the standard. I'm not the standard. Amen. You only follow me as I follow him. And I'm praying for myself. I said, God, bring me to a place of perfection so that the people can see what it looks like in the flesh. Because when Jesus was here on the earth, we got a chance to see what it looked like in the flesh. But guess what? When Job was here, we got a chance to see what it looked like in the flesh. When Daniel was here, we got a chance to see what it looked like in the flesh. And Abraham because what we said about perfection, maturity, that don't mean you never make a mistake again. But mature people handle their mistakes differently from immature people. See, immature people make excuses for their mistakes. A mature person will understand what happened so that they can make the necessary adjustments that it don't happen again. Okay, get the revelation. Amen. And a mature person... It will not have to be continually repenting over the same things over and over again. When are you going to get the building done if you're always working on foundational issues? Think about that for a minute. Every time the inspector comes, he said, well, you can't do no more until you get this foundation right. <laughs> You'll never get the building done. Amen. And so... We, we have to get that revelation and we'll never get the building done either if we don't stay the course. So we have to stay the course. We have to learn how to come out from among and be separate. Don't touch the unclean things and, and seek God with our whole heart because that's when he said, you'll find me when you search for me with your whole heart. We got to get rid of all this half-hearted stuff. The reason why we search God for God with a half-heartedly is because our hearts are divided. Amen. We still, we still have a love for the world. And God is trying to really get us to a place where we, the Bible says it, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We have to just take the scripture for face value. If he said don't love the world, he said all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, is not of God, it's of the world. And the Bible says the whole world lies what? In wickedness. Therefore, you can't trust the world. Even things that appear to be okay. If you really take a spiritual look, if God would really reveal to us, if, if you would let God really reveal to you everything wrong with the world, I promise you, you would be like them old saints. You wouldn't hardly be doing nothing in this world because you would understand that the purpose is to distract you. Amen. I don't hardly watch no TV. You know why? Because ain't nothing on there fit to watch. Because here's the, other, here's the other thing. What is the purpose that God called us out of darkness into the marvelous light? It's to transform us into his image. The world transforms you into its image. That's why the church is looking so much like the world because they follow the world. But yet we say, we the head and not the tail. Well, I'm, I always ask the question, if we the head and why, not the tail, why the world wagging us? Just a thought. Amen. Let me let me get let me get down to this. But we, we're gonna have to get this understanding and stop resisting the truth. You know why the Pharisees couldn't be saved? It wasn't because Jesus couldn't save them. It's because Jesus said, You will not come to me that you might be saved. Because they didn't love the light. Too many people don't love the light. 
Amen. You got to love the light. Okay, let's go. Let's go to, because we want to deal with the issue between the heart and the mouth or the tongue. Because what we learned last week is that the perfect man is the man that can bridle his tongue. Let's look at that. Okay, verse uh, chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters or be not many teachers, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And that's very important. We talked about that last night, last week. For in many things we offend all or cause all to what? Stumble. That's what it means to offend. Amen. And the Bible talks about warring to the um, person that causes the blind to stumble out of the way. Amen. You teaching false doctrine, you causing the blind to what? Stumble. That's why the Bible calls tells us to make straight paths for our feet, lest that which is um, lame be turned out of the way, but rather let it be what healed. And He sent His word and healed them. Why you got to preach the word? That's why we call this sincere milk of the word because we don't add to it, and we don't take from it. We're going to tell you, like Paul, he said, I cease not to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. So he said, in many things, verse 2, we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a what? Perfect man or a mature, fully grown man. And able also to bridle or to bring under control the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. We explain that you can burn down a whole forest with one match. With one spark. Amen. It is started and then it what? Catch on. See, the Lord was dealing with me in this, a, a certain situation that we were going through. And he says that there's a spirit of bitterness that's um, seeking to defile many in, in the church. Amen. The Bible said, lest there be any root of bitterness um, springing up. Lest any root of bit bitterness springing up. Um, trouble you and thereby many be defiled. That's why I always tell us you watch out who you associating with. Amen. You, 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 you got to avoid bitter folk like the, like the plague. Amen. Folk that are not speaking truth because what will happen is that gets in you and the next thing you know you be bitter. And that's how I'm even um, careful about listening to the news and all these different things. Why? Because them words are powerful. Words are powerful. We're going to see that tonight. Amen. And, and why so many people fearful? Because of some words. We don't even know if all this they telling us about COVID is real. But folks are fearful. I mean, <laughs> amen. And we know COVID, the, the, the virus apparently, that's real. We understand that. But I'm talking about a lot of all this stuff, because their story keep changing. First they say six feet, now they saying ten feet. And first they say you don't have to need no mass. Now they saying masses save lives, and all this different stuff. And if you listen to them, they saying that that hydra, whatever it is, that I forget what you said. They said it don't work, but then you have what I believe probably more credible doctor saying that it a white. The, the virus out that that one um christian um african doctor black doctor um african uh, doctor she said that out of 300 some patients she's not lost one because she's using that she ain't putting them on ventilators and doing all this so um when you understand the world that we're dealing with then I, I'm, I'm like this. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them, and I pray about who to trust. But the point I'm making is you have to be careful with the words that you're allowing into your spirit because those words have the power to alter 
your mood. It has the power to alter your thought pattern. It, it can take you, you can be on a high and somebody will speak a word and they'll take you to the depths of depression. That's why you have to guard your heart. I don't fool with everybody. Amen. And I, I, I thank God for the word because it keeps me in the right place. But, but when I take my eyes off the word, so get the revelation about this tongue. Even so the tongue, it says, behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindle. If I never forget when I first, the Lord first told me um, years ago, he first told me to um, start a church. To, he called me the pastor. And I was at my father's church at the time. So I told my father. And so, and I told him, well, I'm going to leave um, uh, such and such a time. So this is how the devil worked. And so just before, I mean, this was in the Christmas revival. The person that was running the Christmas revival called me out and prophesied to me. That's what it did. But it put enough doubt in me that even though I went out before the year was over, I had went back because of the word that I allowed in my spirit. But as soon as I went back, I got the revelation. God let me know immediately. Immediately. I can tell you to go back. See, because God, when he give you a word, you act on that word, he going to test you. He's going to allow you to be tested to see are you going to stand on his word or are you going to let somebody else's word alter his word. You remember that one prophet um, that uh, man of God didn't even have a name, but God sent him to prophesy against um, Jeroboam. Amen. And he went and prophesied, but God told him, when you prophesy, then just get out. See, and that's what a lot of us need. Oh, I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I'm full tonight. So I'm I'm a, I'm a cut to the chase. But anyway, he he did what God said to do. But an old prophet that was in that town, his son told them what the young prophet had done, and he sent the his sons to get the prophet, and 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 the man told him he said. Um, God told me not to eat nor drink in this place, but just prophet because it was a place of idolatry. Prophesy and um, get on out. And so the old prophet told him, well, because he wanted him to come back and have um, eat with him. The old prophet said, well, I'm a prophet too. And the angel told me that you was to come back. And that prophet believed the word of that prophet. See, just because you're a prophet, I'm not going to necessarily believe you. Your, your word going to have to line up with this word right here. See, and what happened, he ended up going back and ended up losing his life. So that's the power of word saying. So we can't be careless with who we are allowing to speak into our lives. Got to make sure. Follow me as I follow Christ, but you have to be following Christ to know if I'm following Christ. Get that revelation, okay? So uh, look at verse 6. So he said, Behold, our great uh, 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 matter a little fire kindled. Verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body, even though it's small, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 7, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. See, that's why the Bible said, take the shield of faith whereby you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the the wicked and what is that about you you can quench those fiery darts that shoot out of folks mouth see i learned how to use the shield of faith against some folk some folks they be they speak stuff in it it don't even go in one ear and out the other it don't even enter i don't even consider sometimes folk be talking telling me stuff and i consider the source and i said i, I ain't even considering that <laughs> and even when it's someone I respect, 
I still have to be um, aware and, and make sure because the enemy gets you any way he can and God will allow you to be, be tested to see if you're going to follow his word or not. And I thank God he gave me another chance. And I, and, and I stayed where I was until he told me to come back. And, and I fully understand why he told me to come back. But understand the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And let me say this very clearly. That means your tongue too. <laughs> Not everybody's tongue but yours. Amen. Amen. My tongue. Amen. Look at verse 9. Wherewith bless we God, even the Father, and wherewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude or the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. And as I said last week, um, you can curse somebody without using the full letter word. Amen. You know, if you tell somebody to have a bad day, that's a curse. Huh? So we got to be careful. And when we are cursed, what did the Bible tell us to do? We are to bless. Amen. We ain't to um, curse folk. We, you got to watch what's going out of your mouth. But what I'm going to teach us tonight, if you want to be sure that the right thing goes out of your mouth, you got to make sure the right thing is in your heart. You know what messing us up? We letting a lot of foolishness in our heart and expect the right thing to come out. You, you let foolishness in your heart, but you expect wisdom to come out of your mouth. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. We're going to see why. That's what we said we're going to deal with this week is the connection between the tongue and the heart. And so let, let me Look what it says. It says, verse 11, Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You got to either make the tree good and its fruit good or make it evil and its fruit evil. That's what Jesus said. He said, if it's not for me, it's what? Against me. If it's not Gathering to me is scattering from me. Amen. And, and, and we got to understand, this is what I want us to understand because I don't want us to get discouraged because we've been in the world and we've been used to doing stuff for so long. Even in the church, we've allowed so much in the church that even in the church, you can, you can get real messed up in the church. Amen. My father used to talk about because he wasn't a man of a whole lot of words and he didn't like being around a lot of foolishness. And he used to talk about sometimes he can't hardly hear the message because the preacher's up there doing too much talking in the pulpit. <laughs> He'd be like, I, I might need to move away from this person because they talking too much. <laughs> got, and ain't, ain't talking the right thing. We got to get the revelation. God is trying to help us because we can get control of our tongue. What did the Bible say? We can be brought to a place of perfection. Why? Because God's way is perfect and he makes our way perfect when he, we allow him to fill us with his spirit. Look what it says. And then we're going to look at some more scriptures. Who is a wise man and, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. In other words, you don't have to say a lot, but you need to do a lot. Amen. The Bible says, I love this scripture. It says, um, you say you have faith and I say I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith, what? By my works. I ain't got to tell you. I got to show you. See? Amen. We got to be from, where is that, Missouri, the show me state? Amen. Because sometimes people, and, and I'm going to say me, if if I fall into that category, sometimes we talk a good fight, but when it comes down to fighting, huh? we talk a good holiness life, but when it comes down to living it, and so I'm more concerned with living it than talking it. Amen. Because we're going to be judged by our work saints. And that's the book. And the Bible said, every idle word that proceeds out of our mouth. Think about that for a minute. 
every idle word, every idle word, every non-productive, worthless word that proceeds out of your mouth, you're going to have to give account for it when you stand before judgment. I'm going to have to give an account. When I think about that scripture, it makes me want to close my mouth and not open it again until God puts something in it. So understand that. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Amen. That's knowledge that comes from God. He said, let him show out of a good conversation, a good man of life, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if if ye have bitter envying and strife in your what? Hearts. Because out of bunch of the heart, the mouth what? Speaks. If you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, you can hold it in for a while, but pretty soon it's going to come out. God know how to allow to, to get it out. See, we just went through some stuff and a lot of stuff I didn't know. I, 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 I found out why. Because when you go through stuff with folk, you find out really what's in them. Amen. When everything is going nice and smooth. See, and that's how a lot of times happen in, in, in marriage and in the courtship thing. Everybody's on their best behavior. Amen. But you don't really know that person until you say, I do. And then you go home and have to wake up with that person. Amen. On a daily basis. Then you really get to know what's really what in that person. When the money getting funny and the change gets strange, amen, they put a strain on the marriage. Then you're going to find out who you've been sleeping with. And sometime we find out, amen, we've been sleeping with the enemy. Amen. Because the enemy can talk a good game, but he can't live it. The devil cannot live holy. God help us today. Amen. Burn them biscuits a few times, sister. See what's in that man. <laughs> Let the dinner not be ready when he get home. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to just say this because this is true. You know, I heard somebody say this, and this is for married folk. You know, because you, you find out because somebody, I saw this, it says sex is a misdemeanor. The more I miss it, the meaner I get See what see what's in folk. Stuff like that, it brings stuff out of folk. So what I'm telling us is you have to pray before you say I do because the most important thing in saying I do to somebody is that God said do it to you. He said this is the one because when you go through, you find out what's in folk. Amen. Look what he said, verse 14. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. Amen, stop lying. Folks say, I love you, I love you, and doing the hate on you all, all the time. That ain't right. Look at verse 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. The wisdom of what? Envy and strife. That's perverted wisdom. But you see, he calls it wisdom, but it's the wisdom of the world. But it don't proceed from above. It's earthly, central, devilish. Now, look at verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Get that revelation. See, that's why, saints, we have to get our hearts right with God so there ain't no envy and strife because that's where confusion come in and every evil work in the midst of the confusion. But I love this. Look what it said, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful. You know when you're operating in the wisdom of God because he said the wisdom that is from above is first pure. No impurities in it. Then it's peaceable, it's gentle, it's easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So you look at that to see what wisdom is coming out of you. See, I examine myself. Sometimes I was just telling the Lord today, I don't want to feel this way about a certain thing that was happening because God always allowed things to happen 
because he's trying to purify us. And that's why I always tell us, watch what's coming out of you. Amen. Watch what's making you feel some kind of way. <laughs> Amen. Because God can so purify your heart until you start feeling like he feels. Let me, let, let me move on because I, I have several things I wanted to get through. And time is flying. Go with me to Psalms 141. Because we got to deal with this heart. Because you ain't going to get your, 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 your mouth right until you get your heart right. Amen. You got to get your heart right, saints of the Most High. Amen. When you get your heart right, then your mouth will get right. That's why I'm seeking... That's why I cut out a lot of stuff out of my spirit to die. Because I don't want that stuff in my heart. Because if it's in my heart, then it's going to come forth out my mouth. Watch this. Watch what the psalmist says. Psalms 141. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Now, this is how you obtain grace. This is how you get the grace that you need to shut your mouth when you need to shut your mouth and to speak when you need to speak. Are you following me? Amen. Is you cry unto God. That's what I've been doing. Where I am now, I thank God for where I am. I'm not um, content, satisfied here because I'm pressing on. That's why you, you find me on my knees, on my face, seeking God, crying out to God. Every time I see something in me ain't right, I'm saying, God, take it out. And I know he's going to take it out because he done took so much out. He done delivered me from so much. Amen. But like I said, I'm not going to stop until he delivered me from everything that ain't like him. Amen. Because if he, he don't want to just do a half job. That ain't the kind of God we serve. God wants to perfect that which he started. The Bible said, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. He going to keep working in you if you'll work with him until he gets everything in you that's not like him. Because here's, here's, here's the thing you got to get the revelation of. When you go to the dentist with a cavity, the first thing he does, does is identify the cavity. Once he identifies, tells you you need to come in uh, and get it taken care of. Then he dips it. See, that's why he's. you need to get full of the Holy Ghost so he can operate. Because a lot of us just understand. Get the revelation. Watch this. Before Jesus went to Calvary, he had to first go to Gethsemane to get um, that anesthesia he needed to go to Calvary. He wouldn't have been able to stay on that cross if he hadn't got full of the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said he prayed three times the same prayer. Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And when he came back to his prayer partners, they were asleep. <laughs> Amen. He had to do this thing alone. Sometimes you got to do it alone. Get the revelation. But the Bible said the third time when he came back, he said, y'all go ahead and sleep on. Why? Because the third time he went and prayed, the Bible said the angels came and ministered to him. What did they minister? They administered the anesthesia of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, now I'm ready. He was full of the Holy Ghost. So he was able to go through that operation that he had to go through. And that's how we have to do. That's why saints, we got to pray every day. We can't miss. We got to pray every day because God is going to operate on you every day. Every day. He's working on you, getting you ready for his second coming. Get that revelation. So he said, Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give in to my voice when I cry unto thee. Verse 2. Watch this. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Watch this. Verse 3. Set a watch, a guard. O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. Set a watch before. You got to ask God. That's what the old folks used to say in that song we sung the other night. It says, O Lord, watch my step. Keep my Hand from my wrong. Put your bit in my mouth. Bride of my tongue. Lead me safely on. Put a watch before my mouth. And you know what the watch is? The word of God. This word of God to tell you, no, you need to hold your, your, need to hold your peace. Don't say nothing. 
I mean, many a time, me and my wife were talking about the other day, many a time God caused me to hold my peace because I know if I would have spoke, I wouldn't have said the right thing. So I had to hold my peace and let the Lord fight for me. Amen. And I can say right now, victory. Amen. He is mine because I held my peace. But why? Because I stayed on my face before God. Amen. When you're going through something, that ain't the time, amen, not to be praying. That's the time to be praying more. When you're going through something, that ain't the time to be staying home. Amen. When you're going through something, you need the, the, um, the, the help of the body of Christ. Amen. And so we got to get the revelation because the devil wants to isolate us so that he can destroy us because he can get you by yourself. He'll talk to you until you're just crazy. Tell you just to go ahead and kill your old worthless self. Because he don't want you to know how valuable you are to God. Let me show you right quick how valuable you are to God. There is a parable in the Bible called about the lost um, um, treasure. And, and the Bible said the kingdom of God is like a man, a lost treasure. When a man finds the treasure, he goes and sells everything he has and buys that field. Why? For the treasure that's in the field. And that's talking about um, God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he gave his life, everything he had for what? The field. Why? Because you were in it. So you are worth something to him. Amen. But he got to Get you out just like gold. You don't get gold right out the mountain and go sell it. If you do, you, you sell it for a low price. But whoever takes the time to purify it is going to get the most value from that gold. Get the fact. Get the understanding. God is purifying us because we. he wants to give us more value. His word gives us value. But you got to get that other stuff out. So look what he's saying. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the doors of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity and let me not eat their dainties. Amen. See, we got to stop eating the dainties of Hollywood. See, I heard this one guy, he calls it Holly Weird. <laughs> Understand that. Amen. But you got, and let, let me just, since we're here, remember what Hollywood means. Hollywood is the wood that the witches make their um, wands out of. And they said you, a real powerful one is made out of Hollywood. So if Hollywood is the witch's wand, what, what are the producers in Hollywood but witches? Y'all better get that revelation. Ain't nothing good coming out of Hollywood, even if it's a, it got a Christian theme in it. Because you notice most of the quote-unquote Christian movies are perverted. They ain't, they ain't right by the Bible. They added to it into a front. Yeah, you. <laughs> some people think they know the Bible because they watch the uh, Ten Commandments. But when you go and read the account of the Ten Commandments, what you saw on Charles and Heston... A lot of that was perverted. You got to get the revelation. Get in the book. Amen. Because they have an agenda. You got to understand it. And it's to turn the people of God away from God. Get us so caught up in entertainment. You know, we, we can't hardly just sit and listen to sound teaching and sound doctrine. We got to be entertained. Some folk just get bored because we teach in doctrine. Got to be entertained. Now, if you put a little hoop and a little, you know, and I ain't against hooping now. I don't hoop because uh, that ain't what God gave me, but I ain't saying, but if you're hooping, you should be saying something. Amen. But what we need is just sound doctrine so we can understand how to live because some folk you have that hooping. Once they, once they get to the hoop, you stop listening anyway. <laughs> you just enjoying the entertainment. See? And I ain't saying all preachers is who in entertainment. But let's be real. Because folk, I've seen folk, I saw a preacher one time, he was preaching, 
And all the preachers was all excited. And all he did was said, oh, and they fell out. They lost it. They was like, oh, he preaching it. All he said was, oh, you see what I mean? Because the enemy gets us to a place where we want to be entertained. And if, if you're not entertaining me, I, I, but the Lord told me, I, I didn't call you to entertain nobody. Amen. I didn't call you to tickle nobody's ears. I called you to stir their hearts. And that's what I try to do with the teaching is stir your hearts. Make you understand that God is requiring more of us than most of us are giving him. Okay, let me go to Matthews because I'm about out of time and we're going to probably have to do this some more. Man, and I, and I, I'm not against, it's, you know, I like a good hoop if they saying something. But I don't do it because that ain't what God, that ain't my ministry. So I'm not trying to duplicate nobody else's, just do what God Give me to do. Let's go to Matthew's chapter 15. And let's look at verse. Let's start at verse. Actually, let's start at verse 1. Amen. Uh, Deacon Rashad said, Bishop G. Patterson, he actually said something when he hoops. Amen. He, he's, yeah, he was a, he did. And, and, and there's a lot of them. But we got to get over this entertainment, that spirit of entertainment. Amen. And, and, and make sure we listen because we don't want folks get us all excited and then they can just say anything they want to say because they done got us in a frenzy. And we just be saying amen because when you say amen, you, you're saying I agree. That's why I sit and I listen. <laughs> I listen because I know you got me hyped now. You, you can slip something in on me. <laughs> and I had this one preacher uh, Deacon Richard remembered that. My wife might remember. I'm sure she remembered. Came to Corinthian, and he was preaching, and I was sitting there intently looking and listening. And I guess it made him feel some kind of way. And he stopped in the middle of his message and addressed me. And I was like, "Hey, I, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm listening." And that's what I teach you all to do. Don't get caught up in 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 the hoopla. Hear what is being said and be discerning. And even after the, uh, the message is over, you take them scriptures and go search them and see if the things are so. Be a Berean. Let's look at chapter 15 because we almost out of time. It says 15 and 1, but I want to read this because we, we got to get this revelation. Then came Jesus, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, we still have scribes and Pharisees today. Hypocrites, why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? And I'm not against tradition, but we've got to make sure our tradition does not transgress the laws of God. Look at verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father and mother, let him die to death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. In other words, your parent need um, some groceries, but you say, Well, I can't, I, I got this. $500, but I can't buy your groceries because somebody gave this to me. It's a gift. Or they said, well, really what it's saying, this is a gift that I have to offer to God. Okay. So he's saying, um, use that to honor them. But you just saying, it's a gift. Why? 
because you don't want to honor them. And they said, and this is what they were teaching, then they don't have to honor their father. As long as you just say it's a what? It's a gift. So look what he calls in verse 7. Verse 6 said, Honor not his father his mother, he, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandment of God of none effect through your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Elias prophesy of you, saying, These people draw nigh to me with their what? Mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knoweth thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? I love Jesus' response right here because I use it myself sometimes. But look what he said, verse 13. Amen. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. The Lord done told me that about some folk, some church folk. He said, let them alone. They offended with the truth. Let them alone because I didn't plant them. They're not of me. See, I'm not going to bite my tongue. That hurt. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you whatever God say to say. That's, that's, that's what I'm going to tell you. Because we got too much of this still in the church. Bishop, I mean not Bishop, but Elder Billy used to tell us all the time in Texas, our pastor in Texas, he said the spirit of the Pharisees have never died and is still, is still alive in folk. Get offended with the truth because they don't want you messing with the ungodly traditions. Man, have no zeal for the word of God, but don't mess with their traditions. Don't mess with their um, uh, denominations. And like I told y'all, I ain't against denominations, but you don't put denominations over the word of God. So he says, Every plant that my heavenly Father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Jesus said, and Jesus said, What parable? He said, um, when he when he talked about, he said, um, not that which goeth out of the mouth, the father goeth in the mouth the father of the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. He said, Declare unto us this parable. Watch this, verse 17. Do ye not, do ye yet? Wait, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. In other words, the food, physical food going into the physical body. We know the process, okay? And so that's not what defiles a man. Amen. Whether you eat pig or, um, I mean, some people think still under the law, have the law mentality, but understand we are not under the law, and the Bible makes it perfectly clear. If I want to eat some bacon, I can eat some bacon. Amen. As long as, you know, my health allows it. So that's not a problem. Amen. Um, because the, the pig is not unclean under the New Testament. It was unclean under the Old Testament. And we're not under the Old Testament. And let me say, those who want to be under the Old Testament, y'all better hear what the Bible said. Because if you put yourself under the Old Testament, you become responsible for doing every jot and every tittle of the law. And you still ain't going to be saved. Get that revelation. Just keeping the Sabbath, that ain't going to be enough. If you're saying you got to keep the Sabbath, that is not enough. You got some denominations say that the Sabbath is the mark of God. And you have to keep the Sabbath. No, that's Old Testament. I'm going to teach on the Sabbath later. But let me finish this. It says, verse 18, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and defile the man. 
For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So get to Revelation. The, 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 the relation between the heart and the mouth. We say um, the, the perfect man is the man that can what? Bridle his tongue, and then he can bridle the whole body. If I don't offend with my words, I can bridle the whole body, and I'm a perfect man. But in order to um, bridle that tongue, he said, put a watch on my mouth. What is the watch? The word of God. Amen. But I've got to hide it where? In my heart. What did David say? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Or what did the psalmist say? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. But you got to get this thing in your heart. And that takes labor, saying, because the Lord let me understand. He said, if you watch what goes in, you never have to worry about what comes out. But when you careless about what you allowing into your heart, that's when you're going to have to be um, well, you know, because some folk, they, <laughs> they have to really watch it. Because they'll cuss. Some saints will cuss now. They sure will. And and I've had a few of them talk to me and get a little riled up and almost go there. And then they figure out who they're talking to and they catch themselves. I ain't trying to be worrying about catching myself. I mean, I've understood. If you make sure that it's not in you, you don't have to worry about it coming out of you. Because you can't get blood out of a turnip. You only get what's out of a person, what's in a person. So don't be surprised when when you're talking to somebody and they say, and all of a sudden they say some stuff they ain't got no business. Amen. It was in them and it came what? Out. Amen. And that has happened to me. But when it happened to me, I, I went to God in prayer and fasting. And do you know he cleansed me? I can't even cuss now if I wanted to. Can't no cuss word come out of my mouth. You know why? Because ain't no cuss words in my heart. Because I keep telling, some folk get mad when I say it, but it's the truth. I've been mad enough to cuss since I've been saved, sanctified, and filled with a mighty, mighty burning fire. I've been mad enough to cuss. Amen. I've heard curse words in my head, but they didn't come out of my mouth. Why? Because it wasn't where? In my heart. Amen. Get that revelation. You got to get it. Our hearts have to be clean. We can be perfect, but we've got to do what is necessary and stop making excuses. Nobody's perfect. You know why nobody's perfect? Because you ain't trying. You ain't doing what's necessary. You keep looking at anything. Amen. Every movie come out. There you go. Amen. Just because Demzel Washington say you say, that don't mean he say He's still cussing and he's still doing all that other stuff. Don't tell me that. You'll know him by their what? We got to stop all this foolishness, saints, in the church. Because we are responsible for keeping the church clean. Stop all this talking about judge not that you be not judged. I don't talk to us about this because the Bible says that them that are without God judge, but them that are within, we're supposed to judge. If we, if we would have been more diligent in judging ourselves in the church, the church would not be in the mess that it's in today. That's just the fact because we wouldn't just tolerate. Um, you remember we read that in, in when we dealt with the seven churches a few lessons back? One of the things that he said about, I think it was Thyatira, one of the good things he said about them, or Sardis, one of them, he says one of the good things about them was they could not um, tolerate basically them that are evil. We have too high of a tolerance for evil preachers and evil apostles and evil prophets. Folk will prophesy or prophet lie and then go sleep with somebody that same night that ain't their wife, that ain't their husband. Pimping prophets and temple prostitutes. We got to clean the church up. My wife um, taught that lesson. We got to repent of all this stuff. Turn from it. Get our hearts clean. You won't commit adultery if adultery ain't in your heart. We just read that. Let me read it again. But those things which proceed, verse 18, um, 
Matthew 15 and 18. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Clean up your heart and you'll clean up your thoughts. Watch what you think and then you can... Because I always say that the mind is the gateway to the heart. It starts up here. But if I'm careful what I'm thinking, because sometimes the devil brings evil thoughts to my mind, that's as far as they get because I don't want it to get in my heart. Because if it get in my heart, that's when it's going to start uh, manifesting itself and ultimately it'll come out my mouth, get the revelation. So he said, out of the heart proceed evil, evil thoughts, Murders and murder. Some of us are just mass murderers. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you the truth. Because the Bible said, if you um, hate your brother without a cause, or you're angry at your brother without a cause, you are a murderer. So some of us are mass murderers because we just hate everybody. Just be mad at everybody. They don't do what we want them to do. You are a murderer. That's what the book said. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the, the lying tongue hateth the soul that is afflicted by it. That's why we got to get back to the word so we can judge ourselves to make sure that when we, we, we talk about I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad. Well, are you really? You better make sure. Look what he said. Out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries. That comes from your heart. Fornication, that comes from your heart. And if you look on a woman and you look on a man and lust after him, you've already committed it in your heart. Some of us sit up in church and having relationships in our mind with folk. These are things that the Lord showed me. You see, back in the day, though, sometimes, how many, remember, in, <laughs> just say something, if you remember them days when you'd be sitting, I remember as a child being brought up in church of God and Christ, and sometimes you'd be looking at some of them elders, they'd be up in the pulpit, and all of a sudden they'll just say, loose here, loose here. <laughs> and you wonder what they what they talking about. They trying, some thought done tried to come to their mind, and they, what? rebuking it. That's what you have to do. You have to learn how you have to grow up to the point where you can discern between the thoughts of God and the thoughts of the devil. And as soon as an ungodly thought comes to your mind, you need to rebuke it so it don't get well in your heart. Look what he said. Thefts. False witness. Blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Saints, I'm going to have to close for the night. I got more word, but I'm out of time. Man, saints, I, 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 if I seem to be a little passionate, it's only because I am, and I know that the time is short, saints. We need to stop playing, church. It's not a time to play. If you're going to be saved, be saved. Ask God to help you. Stay on your face. The Bible says that whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but everything ain't going through them gates. You're going to have to be perfect. Uh, I didn't get to Col Colossians this week. I'm going to get to tonight. I'm going to get to it Friday. Lord bless. I, I, I'm, I'm praying. Help me to get to it Friday because you need to see that. God is calling us to perfection, and we need to be working on it. Amen. We don't need to be Keep keep talking about um, nobody's perfect. The Bible done the Bible done said be perfect, and it then told us how to do it. So that's what we're working on at the Lord's house of prayer for all people, and that's what we're praying for you, saints. I, I love you with the love of God, Amen. And, I, and God bless you. Good to see so many on tonight. Be encouraged, Amen. Know that God is yet in control in the middle of this. Pandemic, God is yet in control, and we have to keep our minds stayed on Him, Amen. So that we don't get fearful like the rest of the world, because they're gonna try to get us to um, take this vaccine. We, we, we y'all want to be watchful as they begin to get this vaccine, and 
and, and trying to get us to take these vaccines. You got to be watchful, saints, and you can't be fearful because when you are fearful, you make the wrong moves. And that's just the, so be full of faith. Don't be full of fear. Stay in the word of God. Get God's word in you and be faithful and not fearful. Amen. So we thank God for you on tonight. We're going to let you go and we're praying for you. And remember to pray one for another. Remember the Hutchison, um, um, Deacon Hutchison brother is still, from my understanding, sick with that COVID. And we want to pray for him. Keep him in our prayers that God would heal his body. In the name of Jesus, amen. And remember all those that are sick, Mother um, um, Wilson, her treatments have been going well. So we thank God for that, amen. And all those that have lost loved ones, we want to remember them in our prayer. God bless you. And until Friday night, um, be blessed.